Practice Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Practice Prepper. In this video, we're talking about the Day 18 episode of Practice Prepper Alien Invasion. And let's just pause on that for a moment. Day 18, it's become a young man, or it's blossomed into a young woman. I, I don't know what the gender of the series is. Maybe it's a neutral gender kind of thing. With all this testosterone going on right here, though, it's totally a dude series, though, isn't it? I don't know. If you have a preference about or a sense of what the gender of the series is, I would love to hear it as well as your, your reasoning. So anyway, yeah, we're going to talk about some discussion points and topics brought up on the Day 18 episode. And at the very end, I'm going to share with you a sneak peek of what's happening next time on this series. But before any of that, if you haven't seen the Day 18 episode, because I know that YouTube has not been a huge fan of sending out notifications for my channel lately, I... I don't know why, but if you haven't seen 18, here's a link somewhere. You can click on it and find out what we're talking about before we talk about it. Wait a moment. Okay, we'll jump right in, but first I want to make sure I thank some people because the only reason I'm able to do this, this kind of big series stuff, like these alien invasion episodes, they take me almost 20 hours each episode to put together. And in addition, the, the, I don't know if you've noticed, but the, the entire quality level of my whole channel has gone up. And the only reason I'm able to do that kind of stuff is from the generous support of people just like yourself who have gone to patreon.com slash praxis prepper. And for as little as a dollar a month, they're just helping to keep this, this series going and allowing me to take the extra time it takes to do this kind of stuff. And the people who jumped on just in the past uh, you know week or two are Ethical Preparedness, who I'm, I'm a huge fan of their channel as well. And they they might possibly be the guest star of the Day 19 episode. I don't want to ruin anything, but that could be what's happening on the next episode. It obviously totally is, yeah. Anyway, thank you, EP, for jumping on board and not only being in the uh, series, but also helping to keep me able to produce it. Also, thank you to Docile One for jumping on board and helping out over at Patreon.com. And another thank you to Hayden, and an anonymous uh, contributor from Texas who didn't want me to use their name. And I totally get it. I mean, this is after all the practice channel and I'm kind of embarrassed to be involved with it myself. So <laughs> I totally get that. Anyway, if you want to uh, uh, join all those people uh, in supporting this, uh, you know, this whole channel and this alien invasion series, you can go to patreon.com slash practice prepper. And again, for as little as a dollar a month, you can, you know, help keep all this stuff going. You'd also be giving yourself access to lots of behind the scenes content that is exclusively released there. Also, uh, opportunities to interact with the series, help to steer the plot. And you guarantee yourself that you're always locked in to get to see all the episodes. I, I don't necessarily release all the episodes on youtube.com. Uh, I do when I'm at full funding, but if funding ever dips below the 100% level, the second episode of the month only goes out to the Patreon.com community. So if you want to lock yourself in, again, just for as little as a dollar a month, you get guaranteed access to every single episode that comes out. So link down there if you want to do that, and it would be very much appreciated. Really, it is the only reason I'm able to do this kind of stuff is from the generous support of people just like you. So let's talk about this episode. Now, there's a lot going on in this episode. You know, we could talk about hunting and you know, trapping and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but what I really wanted to talk about in this episode is the idea of a, being flexible and being adaptive. Uh, if you guys, you know, are familiar with my channel, uh, I, you, you probably know that I personally, I'm a vegetarian. Uh, and the character that I play in the series is, you know, vegetarian as well. Uh, when, when I say vegetarian, I'm almost completely vegetarian. I occasionally eat some, like, sardines or salmon because it's pretty healthy. But, uh, uh, you know, aside from that, you know, I'm essentially, you know, all vegetarian. And, and the reason I do that is because it's a healthy lifestyle. Uh, it's a less expensive lifestyle oftentimes. Uh, and um, and it, it just, it works, it works for my, my ethical compass. I don't like the idea of killing if it's not necessary. And right now, during normal times, I can totally get by, totally fine. In fact, like I said, it's even kind of healthier not killing lots of animals. So, so that's what I choose to do. It works, with, again, with my ethics. It works with my health. So that's what I do right now. But in a crisis situation, I feel that I would need to be capable of being flexible and changing because, you know, that word necessary. I don't want to kill when it's not necessary. Um, that kind of changes in a crisis where you could starve to death if you don't do that. So uh, obviously, you know, for me as a vegetarian, I would, you know, be willing to take in some meat sources so that I could, you know, not die. That's really easy for a lot of people to kind of point fingers and be like, yeah, well, you know, you vegetarians, you're going to have to like get with reality, wake up, smell the coffee, 
what's another cliche I can throw out there? I don't know. But you know, all, all you vegetarians, you're, you're living in this cloud right now, but like if the shit ever hits the fan, it's gonna be like spam and hunting nonstop, like 10 seconds after the shit hits the fan. It's gonna, just, you know, nothing but spam and meat. Um, yeah, vegetarians are gonna have to adapt. But uh, I think a lot of times people forget uh, how atypical kind of the modern Western diet is. It's so, so rich with, with meat calories. And, and a lot of you know, new affluent people in China are starting to get uh, you know, to a place where there's a lot more meat in their diet. But that's not the historical norm. And in a crisis situation, I think that uh, this, the norms would kind of go back to kind of the way that they usually were all throughout history, where most people had a primarily sort of uh, you know, vegetarian diet. Obviously, you know, there's different pockets in different areas. Uh, you know, Eskimos, <laughs> you know, they you know, had a fair amount of, uh, you know, meat in their diet with salmon and, you know, seals and all that kind of stuff. You know, so, I mean, it's different in different places. But, you know, for the broad uh, majority of people across the world, uh, they didn't always have as much meat in their diet as a lot of, you know, affluent people today do. And I know from my own experience that it seems like a lot of people are kind of addicted to that, at least in a mental sense. I know when I used to, you know, do a lot of film production, you know, you, you'd be having lunch with people. And, you know, so many times it came up because people would see, you know, clearly I'm, you know, eating vegetarian food, that people would say, oh, dude, you know, oh, I could never do that. You know, I just, I'd be so tired all the time. I just, oh, I just, I need meat. I need meat. They said that. And by the way, it, I used to work in Boston a lot. So a lot of people had South Boston accents. So, <laughs> so that's where that comes from, dude. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, people would say they need meat, and I don't think they need it in a physical sense, but, uh, but certainly in a mental sense. A lot of people are kind of addicted to that kind of high meat diet, and in a crisis situation, I think, you know, a lot of people have the plan that's like, you know, 10 seconds after shit hits fan, I'm out, I'm hunting, you know, but a lot of people have that plan, and the local animal populations, while numerous perhaps at the moment, are, are going to take a hit with everybody, you know, killing everything in the area. And I think in no, sh in, in no short order, a lot of people are going to have to start going with a lot less meat in their diet and kind of figure that, that out for themselves. And, and that can be difficult. You know, you're adapting to a new situation and a new diet at the same time. And I think it's important to give that some, some forethought about what would that be like for you? Have you thought about that? Like, can you keep operating at a high level if you're not enjoying the same diet that you have today? Because, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to, you know, be rolling around on the floor, you know, just feeling sorry for yourself, feeling like, oh, you know, all I had today was a peanut, you know, I can't go out and I can't do anything, you know, because there's still stuff that has to get done. And on a lower calorie diet, you need to be able to still function. Have you given that some thought? That's what today's episode is about, is the idea of being flexible, the idea of keeping in mind that the things you're used to now, you may have to change in a crisis and vegetarians will have to change, and, you know, omnivores and carnivores are going to have to change as well. So give that some thought, uh, and, you know, leave any tips in the comments below. If you Have you ever tried to change your diet? You know, what were ways that you found that, you know, worked for you? I know for me personally, when I started becoming a vegetarian, it was kind of by accident. Uh, I was just, I was living on my own, and vegetarian food, the, the leftovers lasted longer. So I just, I tended to make more of that stuff because I knew that it would keep for longer. Also the cleanup when you're doing vegetarian uh, cooking is easier. You don't have to be as careful about like, you know, not getting the meat juices on things and washing everything really meticulously. Uh, well, I mean, you still wash stuff, but it's like, you know, when you have you know dead animals around, you have to really make sure you clean up your workspace. Um, so I kind of got I began being a vegetarian just sort of through laziness and, and I didn't do it in a, like today I'm you know an omnivore and tomorrow I'm going to be a vegetarian. It was a slow transition over time where I just started adopting more and more vegetarian meals and you know over a series of months it just kind of crowded out all the other things that I kind of had been used to eating and like I said after a couple of months I was just like oh geez I'm kind of a vegetarian and oh geez this actually feels better and I, you know I just feel more comfortable with this so I'm going to stay with this. So that was how I kind of changed my diet was slowly one thing at a time not so much taking things away but adding extra things and they you know crowded out the stuff that you know yeah 
I don't want, I want to say that I didn't want to be eating because at the time I wasn't, it wasn't really a conscious choice, but you know what I'm saying. It was like adding extra things as opposed to re removing things. And you know, you only got so much space in your stomach and it's going to crowd other things out. So that was sort of how I ended up changing my diet. But have you ever had to change your diet in a major way? And uh, you know, what are some tips that you would give people about how to do that in a way that would be the most com uh, comfortable and the least traumatic for their, their digestive tract and, you know, and their mind as well. So that's it. Enough to talk about that. Please leave your comments below. I'd love to hear them. I think it's, it's really interesting when lots of people make major changes in their life and diet is a big, big part of everybody's life. And here is a clip from the ethical preparedness episode. Ah, get out of my face. There's a few flies around here. It's not as bad as the old place, but there's still a few flies. <laughs> anyway, here's a clip from 19. Thanks for watching. We were on a camping trip when all of this started making the news and we at least made it to his house before all the cars and the electronics and everything else shut down. But we're hearing that the aliens targeted the government buildings and military bases, and major bridges and, and, and stuff like that. But uh, it's been getting, the people have been getting crazy. Honestly, Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.